Okay, you guys, today I'm updating you slash speed reviewing 38 makeup items that I've recently tested. You guys know I take these videos very, very seriously. Everything that I test, I keep it in a drawer and then I periodically come back and I update you on how the products have been working for me. This is a big one, 38 items. I'm actually kind of breaking this up into two parts. So what I mean by that, I mean, this is a whole video, but I'm gonna have another speed reviews video up next week or so because I could could have very well put 60 items in this video but I decided I'd rather just do two videos close together so that we can make the most of face watching and all of that because I, I only have one face for examples. I mean I've just been testing so many products lately so there will be another speed reviews very very soon but let's get into these guys. I have a mixture of a giant Sephora haul I did a month or so ago. I have some Jones Road beauty products that I'm updating you on. House Labs is another big hitter in this video so let's get into it I'm trying not to talk too much but look at me continuing to talk okay let's start off with face primers so I have two the first one is from Mayron this is the hydro prep hydrating hyaluronic serum this was very kindly sent to me from Camerata Cosmetics I do like this but it's just not my favorite primer it's not as hydrating as I need it to be what I like about this is how lightweight it feels and it definitely does hydrate the face but for me it just doesn't give me enough every time I use it my skin feels nicer yeah there's other products that I would reach for over this I feel like this is a good product for oily skin like this is the kind of product that I would put in up my makeup kit for somebody who needs a little bit of hydration but I can tell that they're oily this is what I'd use this for but it's not really for me now I'm really excited I waited to update you guys on this because in my initial thoughts on this they have changed this is why I love the speed reviews and makeup updates this is the Natasha Denona hygiene skin glass so the first time that I tried it I was unsure but I was like I like it but I don't know that it's all that I'm here to update you that now that I've used it more I actually really really like this it gives a very pretty metallic finish on the skin which looks really flattering underneath makeup and I also find the consistency of this to be more hydrating than ever I feel like the more often that I use this every day the better and more hydrated my skin becomes it really does feel like a skincare infused product so I've been thoroughly enjoying this for my dry skin I've been enjoying the gleam that it gives underneath it even looks good underneath a product like a skin tint or something very sheer to give that extra glowiness so I've been enjoying this do I think it's worth the money still I don't know that it's worth the money but I can tell you I've been enjoying having it in my collection so yeah this has been very positive for me okay I have my first Jones Road Beauty product I've done a full video on these but I just want to update you now that I'm using them even more I mean I've used these a ton just because there's something about this line that I keep wanting to play with so this is the what the foundation I've officially decided I am not a fan of this more so for the application of it it is so messy in the container that she put this in and the product separates there's oil sitting on top in literally only two days so yes you have to mix it and yes she does say that you have to mix it but that's the point I don't like mixing it as far as how it looks on the skin I think it's very very nice obviously it is a very light coverage it's great for mature skin uh, it's very subtle evening but it just makes the skin in my opinion look glowier and more alive however it makes my face really sticky my hair sticks to it I'm like suffering right now because I have it all over my face I look really sweaty living in a humid climate with this it does not go with my current environment around me so personally for me this does not work I don't like it it's not worth the fuss it's not worth my hair sticking to it I, I'm just not that into it I also have this concealer from Jones Road this is the face pencil I have mine in the shade number seven I do really like this product so I like this more so though for no makeup makeup days when I apply too much of this on the under eyes it makes my under eyes look really dry and cakey however for no makeup makeup days if I literally just put it on the inner corner and blend it out with my finger it looks really great and very natural just to kind of blur the blue and purple underneath the eyes so it's great for no makeup makeup but don't apply this in excess on the under eyes I do also like this for spot concealing as well as I've been using it to clean up under the brows so overall I do really like this but in terms of if I'm wearing a full face of makeup I want a full coverage concealer under the eyes I can't use this because too much of this is not a good thing this is really only for days that I'm 
not wearing much makeup and I just want to brighten the under eyes a little bit. So, yep, that's what I found with this. But I do like it and I'm very happy that I have it. Next up from Say, we have the new Hydra Beam Concealer. I do not like this concealer. So this is supposed to be very, very hydrating, which is very exciting. Who doesn't love a good hydrating under eye concealer? But the finish of this is so glowy and so hydrating that it actually, I find it to be very unflattering for my under eye. Number one, I find that it kind of sits on top of the skin. It doesn't really blend in or look seamless with the skin. And the finish of it, because it is so glowy and hydrating, it actually emphasizes the dry patches and the fine line under my eyes. It just doesn't look natural on the skin at all, even though it gives a light coverage. It doesn't give much coverage, but because of the way that it sits on the skin, it looks really unnatural and unflattering. And I thought that this would be good for like a no makeup makeup day because it is a lighter coverage. But because the finish of this is so glowy, there's a huge contrast between the skin <laughs> and my under eyes. You can literally see the glow. It's not a good concealer. Today, I used it kind of all over my face in a larger format than I normally would because I was wearing just the Jones Road foundation and I wanted a little bit more coverage for this video. And that kind of helped because we spread the finish of it a little bit more throughout the face. So it looks a little bit more intentional. But yeah, if I use this under the eyes, it's just a weird look. It emphasizes dryness. Not a fan of it, personally. Okay, let's get into powders. I have two face powders. So the first one is from Refai. This is a weird one. <laughs> this is the Skin Finish water-based powder. I know Becca had one. There's another brand that I cannot quite remember. It's an older brand, but anyways, not the first powder of this nature to come out. It basically, it's a very finely milled powder and it feels wet when you put it on the skin. I like this powder. It's not my favorite powder. I don't find it to be the most smoothing. I don't find it to be the most blurring, but I think it does a good job. I've been enjoying my time with this. I think it's a little too lightweight for my preference on the under eyes. I like a powder with a little bit more oomph to it on the under eyes because I feel like that blurs the under eyes more but in terms of setting the face I've been liking it it feels really weird and cooling on the face but I think this is a solid solid powder it's not the top of my list it's not an all-time favorite but I like this powder and I mean it's a little gimmicky with the <laughs> cooling aspect to it but, but I like that the other powder that I have that so many of you requested I reviewed is from Westman Atelier this is the Vital Press skincare powder I got mine in the shade pink bubble because I don't have a pink powder uh, like this so I think this is a little overrated and overpriced. I don't dislike this powder. I think it's a pretty powder when I use it. I like it, but it doesn't give me what I want it to give me for the price point. I did the Refi on this side of my face, the Westman Atelier on this side of my face, two very different price points. The Refi side looks better. Why I do like this is more so for the color, but I don't think I'm gonna go out and use this as the only setting powder for my whole makeup look. I'm gonna use a setting powder that I like the finish of a little better, and then I would use this to almost brighten the face and kind of color correct in that way. It's a pretty powder, it does smooth out the skin, but there are better, and where I'm more so coming from is from the price point. It's a nice powder, I like it. It's like $75 though. <laughs> so I just, I can't, it's not worth it in my opinion. Next up, we have the LYS Cream Bronzer Stick. I have mine in the shade Motivate. This isn't the perfect color for me. I think I would have preferred to go a little deeper, but I've still been making this work. This is an extremely emollient cream bronzer. It applies very evenly. It's quite pigmented, so be careful. If I got a darker shade, I would imagine I'd have to be very, very careful, but it's almost too emollient. I just feel like it melts at the touch of the skin. And then also, in terms of the design, I feel like I am always kind of nicking the product and it's making a mess because you literally have to kind of make sure it fits perfectly so that you don't hit the product. So anyways, it's it's too creamy for me. It's too emollient. It's too messy to use. But in terms of application and how it looks, it is a very, very pretty bronzer, but it's a, it's a high maintenance product in my opinion. Next up, I have a powder bronzer from House Labs. This is the Power Sculpt Velvet Bronzer. I have mine in the shade Light Level 3. I like this bronzer, but it's been a roller 
roller coaster experience with this. Sometimes I really like it. Sometimes I find that it looks a little patchy on the skin. It's very weird. The way that I find this best applies is from a swiping motion as opposed to pressing. When I press the bronzer in, I find that my bronze looks patchy. When I get it on the side of the brush and I literally swipe it on, that's how I get the most even application. It gets stuck on some parts of the face, I feel like, if you don't apply it right. So I don't think a powder bronzer should have a learning curve. So that's kind of where I'm like, uh, I mean, I like it now that I know how to apply it. I like the color. I think it looks really pretty and smooth on this skin. It's just a powder bronzer. I shouldn't have had to mess around with it to learn how I like to apply it the best. So it's nice, but there's better bronzers out there. Getting into cream blushes. The first one, I'm excited to update you guys on this one. This is the Jones Road Miracle Balm. And I got mine in the shade Dusty Rose. And in my original review, I was totally totally using this wrong apparently to get to the color because I was like this is a clear bomb you have to break through so I did that I still don't love this if I'm being honest yes I get a little bit more color now from it I don't know if it's just a shade but I don't like this color I feel like it has a metallic finish to it which I don't think is very pretty and it's still quite sheer honestly I don't like the way it looks on my lips so I'm partially attributing that to I just don't like the finish of this the color that I picked out but I also feel like it feels heavy on my skin so if I use this as a blush especially if I put down the what the foundation first ugh, my skin feels really heavy with this and it doesn't even give that much color given how heavy it feels and again it gives that balmy sticky feel to the cheek yeah I'm just not a big fan of this product I don't really like the consistency of it and this particular color I'm also not too big of a fan of so yeah unfortunately this one didn't work out for me either way now what I do like a little bit more, but it's still not perfect from Jones Road, is the Lip and Cheek Stick. I have mine in the shade Mauve Rose. Again, this is a lip and cheek product that I don't like the look of it on my lips, which is a turnoff to me. But it gives a little bit more color than the Miracle Balm, I would say. So I like it a little bit more, but it still doesn't give me what I prefer in a cream blush. I'm picky, I guess. This is better for no makeup makeup days when you don't have a as much coverage on but if you're wearing a base product that contains coverage the coverage literally eats this color alive and you're not going to see it so if you're wearing this in the jones road beauty aesthetic of the no makeup makeup look i think you will like this but I still prefer my blush sticks to have a wee bit more color. Next product that I have is from YSL. This is from their new line. This is actually the first product that I've purchased from this line. This is the Lip and Cheek Balmy Tint in the shade New Peach. And I've heard a couple of you tell me that I should get a darker color, that those are better because this gives me nothing. This is essentially like a clear balm with a very, very, very subtle hint of tint. It's unflattering on the lips. It feels a little vaseline -y to me and on the cheeks again just like the jones road if you have something with coverage on the coverage is going to eat this product alive it's not a bad product if you don't have much of a base product on it's okay but still i feel like i need to apply a ton of it to get the color to even show up it's just not worth the price point i'm not a big fan of this powder blushes so the first one that i have is from rms this is the redimension hydra powder blush i believe these are quite popular I have mine in the shade Maiden's Blush. I really, really like it. I have it on this cheek right now. I think it's very, very pretty. It's a touch more metallic than I prefer. A good affordable dupe for this is the Alme Healthy Hue Blushes. I did a whole YouTube short on it. The Alme is a bit better because it's a touch less metallic than this, so I actually prefer the Alme. But this is still a really nice product. I can see why it's very popular. It's just if I were to tweak it a little bit, it's a bit heavy on the metallic finish, but gorgeous blush nonetheless. And then as you know, Pat McGrath came out with the Divine Blush Duo. I picked up all but one shade. So I'm here to update you. I mean, if you watch my videos, you already know there's two colors in particular that I am 
reaching for. The first one is Venusian Sunrise. I feel like this particular one is a little bit more of a unique shade. There's like purple in there and a brighter pink. It's just very pretty for cool tones. And then Paradise Glow is the perfect sunburnt, sun-kissed kind of blush. So I find myself reaching for those two. I think those are the most unique colors in the lineup as well. Today I'm wearing Divine Rose 2 because I haven't used that one in a while. So overall, I have a very positive opinion on these. I think they're long-lasting, they're easy to apply, but a con to these is I feel like it's hard to just get into one color. They are a duo, but no matter what brush I use, I always find myself just getting frustrated and mixing the two together because the corner of my brush always gets into the color that I wasn't really interested in. So even though it's a blush duo, I find that I'm just mixing both, so I'm paying extra for one shade anyways. But the quality is really, really nice. I'm just struggling to actually utilize it as a duo. Also in that collection came the Divine Glow Highlights. So this is a formula that already existed, but she launched two new shades. Luna Allure is great for very, very fair people because this is the first time she's come out with a highlighter that would work for somebody that's quite on the pale side. I bought it to review. It's it's not my color. It's very white on me. And then Golden Moonlight is a little bit more appropriate for me. It's still a bit bright for my preferences. So I bought those for review purposes. The quality of them is really great but they aren't highlight colors that I personally prefer they're a bit too bright for me we also have from house labs the bio radiant gel powder highlights I picked up two shades when I originally bought these at launch time because they were so pretty I couldn't decide I picked up sunstone and peach quartz I'm actually wearing peach quartz on this side of my face I think this and another product which I will talk about at the end of this video are my favorite items from house labs this is actually a highlight that kind of stands out on the market and what is also being sold at Sephora, which I think is a big deal. They're very smooth on the skin. They do have a more blinding metallic finish, but they apply seamlessly. You can't tell exactly where I applied the highlight to start because of how well they blend in. They also have some really beautiful shades in the range. Very, very unique, very smooth to apply, mess-free, gives a really pretty look to the skin. I definitely recommend these from this launch, probably my favorite item. And then ColourPop, a while back they came out with the Winnie the Pooh collection. And so I got sent the highlights. There was a third Super Shock Cheek highlight, but it was way too deep for my skin tone. But I've been using these two a lot, so I thought I'd give these a moment of love. Both are very, very beautiful. Now you have to be careful with the Super Shock Cheeks because if you over apply them, they can look patchy on the skin. But if you just get a little bit on a damp sponge and push it into the skin, they're really is not a more natural look like you can see the big difference right now between the house labs and the color pop but the color pop I feel like looks so seamless in the skin and a little bit more natural these are very very beautiful highlights a very easy application this is not a new formula so I'm not gonna talk about these too much but I've been enjoying these very light golden colors face is done let's move on to the eyes we're gonna start off with eyebrows so first I have this guy from Jones Road this is the brow pencil it's a decent pencil it is a charm you know, it's a chunk little pencil. I love how short and stout it is. So I use it on this brow. It's really great for a quick fill in. It's not as precise as I normally prefer. So this isn't something that I'm reaching for all the time. But for days where I don't care about the precision of my eyebrows or getting them perfect, I just want to run a little bit of color through them. A lot of times I'll do that and then I'll put on a really nice brow gel to shape, but I'll just use this to fill in. So I do really like this. This is for those of you that are blessed with gray eyebrows to begin with and you don't need to like like draw in every single hair. So I do really enjoy this, but it's definitely not gonna be for everybody. The other eyebrow product that I have is from Rare Beauty. So I did a big Rare Beauty review video. So this is one of the items I picked out for that that I didn't have yet. This is the Shape and Fill Duo. I have mine in the shade Light Brown. I love this. I think this is a great little product. It's super neat because you can pull out the brush applicator. And normally I'm not a fan of the brush applicator. So this one is actually very, very good. Whenever I use this product, I just use the applicator that it comes with. So I'm getting the most out of it. 
there's one shade that's a little bit more pomade-y and then one shade that's a little bit more powdery. I just kind of mix them both together and I mean, I love the look of a powder brow. So <laughs> every time I wear this, I love the way my brow looks. It's a really, really solid product. Feels quite um, sturdy, so it's really good for travel. Doesn't take up too much space. I highly recommend this. And then I have a brow gel and this is one of my new all-time favorite brow gels. This is from Too Faced. This is the Fluff and Hold Laminating Brow Wax. Every time I use this, I simply love the way my brows look. I mean, it gives that fluffier look, but you can still get a lot of control with it. And something that I found out that I didn't know, if you pull the cap off, you actually have a brush underneath. I loved this product before I even knew there was this feature, and now I love it even more. So I will run the product through my eyebrows, which they already look great. But then for extra longevity and hold, I will use the brush to kind of shape and press the hairs down where I want them to go. It's a nice long-lasting brow gel. I love the way that it lays and separates my hair down and it's not like too heavy or thick like glue so it still is great for every day. One of my new favorite products and I can't believe it's from Too Faced. I have these guys from House Labs. These are the high power pigment paints. This is kind of a big deal in the launch and the marketing. They're okay. These aren't the type of product that I'm normally going to reach for so I'm not a fan. I think if you're into really artistic makeup, graphic liner, graphic makeup, all of that, you will enjoy these products. But in terms of if you're an everyday person like me and you want an everyday look, I prefer the matte. I think they're very easy to blend, but you wanna work on one eye first, blend it out, and then go to the other eye because they dry really, really fast. The good thing is they last a long time. They're quite budge proof. So if you live in a hot environment, I don't know, maybe you're a lifeguard, you're gonna be around water, camp counselor, I don't know. These are really great. Now, the metallic ones, I'm not as big of a fan of. I feel like they look chunky on the eyelid and crackly. They don't feel crackly, but they look that way on the eyelid. At least if you're gonna put them all over the eyelid. It's different, you know, if you take an eyeliner brush and you want a line of metallic, but in terms of spreading it out all over the lid, I'm not as big of a fan. So these are just products that I'm really not going to reach for. I I prefer to just use a powder eyeshadow palette. They work, but I don't love them. I also have this set from ColourPop. I talked about this in my favorites. It's so good. This is the Thanks a Bunch Super Shock Shadow Trio. I almost put this like in my giveaway pile, but one day I decided to use it and I'm obsessed with the colors that these come with. I mean, a Super Shock Shadow is not a new product at all. <laughs> these have been around for years. They're great, they're beautiful. But the shades in here are so metallic and pretty. They have been perfect for summer one and done shadows. If I just want a pretty gleam on the lid, something to look pretty when the sun comes down, I love the shades in here and you know the quality of the Super Shocks are great. Next I have the Sparkle Wash from Jones Road. This is really really nice. In terms of longevity, it's going to stay all day. It's not going to budge. It's not my favorite look for a glitter shadow. I find the glitters in here to be a bit too big for my preference and it's hard to get an even wash all over the lid. I feel like you almost need to have a base underneath, a base eyeshadow, and then go in with your fingers and kind of spread it around. In that case, this looks beautiful, but if I have a bare lid and I want a sparkle wash and I put this all over my lid, it looks really uneven and I don't like that look. So I like this product. I think it's very nice. Longevity is great, but I'm a little bit picky with how I apply it. Also from Jones Road Beauty, I have the Just A Sec eyeshadow in the shade Pewter. I do not like this product. Unfortunately, it did not work out for me. It looks very pretty. It's very Jones Road-esque in that it just gives a nice subtle wash to the lid. I think it's very pretty, but it creases like a mofo, you guys. I do not struggle with longevity and eyeshadows. I do not have an oily eyelid. However, my creases, they just separate right away with this product on top of it. So I don't like that product. Eyeliners, I have quite a few. The first one is from Rare Beauty. This is the Perfect Strokes Matte Liquid Eyeliner. It's nice. The felt tip is a bit thick for my preference. I don't know. I feel like I don't have enough precision. But in terms of the product, it's really nice, easy to apply. It lasts a long time. Other than the application, I think everything about it is a very good eyeliner. And even though I think the felt tip is a bit thick, I still have a good time applying it. So this is a nice liquid liner. But I would choose others over this one. I'm going to breeze through the Jones Road The Best Pencil because I've talked about this so much, but I just wanted to put it in this roundup. I find in the shade brown the best pencil, honestly. One of the best pencil eyeliners out on the market. It lasts a long time. It's so easy to apply. It's as easy as an eyeshadow to apply. Serious. It is a perfect like powdery pencil. 
I also have the Wayne Goss the Eye Cool Pencil in the shade Granite. This is his newest shade that came out with his most recent collection. So first of all, I love this for the color. I do not have a color that is this granite shade in my collection, and it's quite easy to apply. It's more cream-based, I would say, compared to the Jones Road Beauty, but it lasts a really long time, and I've always really liked his eyeliners, and again, really excited about the color for this one. And then the last two eyeliners are from the ColourPop Star Wars collection that came out a couple months ago. These are the graphic ink liners. They're there's two shades, they have glitters to them. I do not like these. They're a bit watery and they separate, so it takes a few coats to get the kind of finish that you would prefer. And also it burns my eyes. So that right there is kind of a big no-no. So yeah, it's a pass for me on these. I have two falsies that I'm gonna talk about. So if you think my lashes looked a little funky or off, it's because they are. So these eyelashes from Milani in this style Flora had so much potential. They're so pretty and wispy, but it's the band itself that I really struggle with it fitting on my eyelid. It just wants to kind of pop up and the way that they sit on the lashes, they never can fully morph together with your natural lashes. There always is a separation. <laughs> it's just not a good look. It looks okay from afar, but if you don't have either dark eyeshadow on or a lot of liner, you'll see the edges popping. You'll see the separation. I don't recommend those. Another lash that I've tried recently that I don't recommend are the Lily Lashes Ever Everyday Foam Ink in Everyday Miami. I was really excited about these because I love Miami lashes, though they are a bit too much for my small eyes. I was hoping that these would be like Miami, but better for smaller eyes. But the truth is the band on these are way too big and then the lashes are way too small. It's just unflattering. You can see the band popping up. So I still have a few lashes to try from this line, but this one is really bad. Both of these lashes after this video, I'm throwing away. That should say a lot. Okay, are we ready to move on to the lip? So the first one that I have is a lip balm. This is from Emile Cordon and it's the classic lip balm. The Emile Cordon lip balms are so beautiful, so luxurious, but very, very pricey. So while I do like the quality of this, it's a bit of an overpriced lip balm. I feel bad saying that because they are a smaller company and the product that they have is great, but these are a luxury lip balm. So it's up to you to decide if that's worth it. They also are very sensitive. So if you have a hot house, these will melt, you know, temperature temperature sensitive, I guess is the word that I was looking for. The second your warmth of your finger touches these is like turned to liquid, but they're so hydrating and so luxurious and so nice feeling, but they're an expensive lip balm. So I'll leave it at that. I also never got the chance to update you guys on the ColourPop Star Wars lipsticks. So I love the lipsticks from ColourPop. I feel like they don't come out with enough in their collections because it's one of their best lip products. Now I'm not gonna lie to you guys, there are two dark colors and a light color in this collection, I never wore the dark colors. I'm just not wearing them this time of year, but the shade Dark Lord is a dreamy peachy shade. I haven't mixed with another lip color right now, but I do have it on. I think the ColourPop lipsticks themselves are such a great affordable lipstick. You can't tell that they're only a few bucks. The packaging of these are really cute, so I haven't reached for the darker colors. They just haven't been in my color palette this time of year, maybe more so in winter. We'll, we'll talk again, but for now I've only been wearing one color, but you can trust that the formula is good and if you like Star Wars, maybe this is a good match for you. I've only tested one color so far, but it's been hard for me to pinpoint my thoughts on the Maybelline Superstay Final inks. I've been keeping this in my purse. I think this particular color is very beautiful. This is a shade Cheeky, but this formula isn't all that. I would still prefer to go for my Superstay matte inks over these. These don't really dry down, so they don't have that Superstay formula <laughs> that they claim to have here. Here. It's a pretty color. It's comfortable. I can't quite put a finger on how I would describe it. It's not quite a cream. It's not quite a liquid lipstick. It just kind of sits on the lips. It's not my favorite lip formula from Maybelline. It's not a bad lip formula, but I just don't really get the point. So a few weeks ago, ColourPop came out with the Apricot Me Not collection, and they came out with at least four is what I kept of the Fresh Kiss Lip Creams. I've been really enjoying these colors for the summer. They are a true cream formula, so they never fully dry down, but they have more of a matte finish. I am currently wearing the shade Freshest mixed with that Star Wars lip color, but oh my gosh, these are such pretty summer colors. They don't have the longest wear, so you do need to keep these in the purse to reapply, but they're very, very pretty. They're a nice formula. I would suggest pairing these with a lip liner though because they're not going to hold themselves on the lip line, but 
They're very pretty colors. I like this formula. House Labs, I ended up picking up one of the lip crayons in the shade Mauve Matte. I really like this. This is a nice matte, thin lipstick. Very lightweight, very easy to apply. The specific color I chose is great for every day. It's a little too creamy, and so for that reason, I do prefer to wear this with a lip liner to kind of guide the outer shape of my lips. But in terms of just throwing this on, this is really great. This is a very nice purse lipstick because you don't really need to look when you put it on. It has kind of a blurring property. It's very, very nice, solid lip product. We have this guy from Jones Road. This is the Lip Tint in Pretty. This is, I would say, probably one of my favorite products from Jones Road besides the eyeliner pencil. This I actually prefer to use on my cheeks over her actual cheek products. So first of all, on the lips, this is very pretty. You can get a sheer coverage over the lips to just kind of add a nice tint, but you can build it up to get quite a bright color with this. It also blends out very beautifully on the cheek. So if you just boop, boop and blend it out you have the perfect monochromatic look in my opinion i'd rather use this as a cheek color it's better than the lip and cheek stick in my opinion so this is one of the most versatile products in the jones road line and i think it's really really beautiful i highly recommend this and then i talked about these are my favorites so i'm just going to go through these very quickly the house labs phd hybrid lip oil in the shade tint this is really pretty it leaves a nice kind of stain to the lip very comfortable lightweight for everyday super solid lip oil i've been loving this keeping it in my purse just using it as I walk by I'll like grab it off my desk and put it on my lips very nice also been loving the Fenty skin cherry treat conditioning lip oil this has such a delicious scent to it and it really does hydrate the lips like I do feel it conditioning my lips it's so good now this I would say is a little bit thicker and more sticky than the house labs so this is more so like for no makeup makeup whereas this because it leaves a slight tint behind I'm more likely to wear this on days that I want a little bit of color to my face it's a little bit more more intentional but they're both very very nice lip oils and I like them for different purposes in different situations alright guys there we have it those are all 38 of the products that I have to talk about today again keep an eye out I should have another speed reviews coming up next week I will have all of the products that I talked about down below in case you're interested in purchasing and yeah thank you guys so much for liking this video and being subscribed to my channel and I'll catch you guys in the next one I guess have a good one